Well, hello everyone. Let's get started with today's lesson, lesson six, electronegativity. So turn to those study guides and let's get started. All right, with lesson six, we are going to dive a little bit more into covalent bonding um, with electronegativity. Um, but electronegativity has a even broader aspect than just focusing on covalent bonding. It will also help us to understand um, ionic bonding and uh, metallic bonding um, more so a little bit later on. So for now, we're gonna use electronegativity to focus more or less on uh, covalent bonding aspects, okay? So let's get started with what electronegativity is. What, it, what do we mean by that? So by definition, electronegativity is the ability of an atom to attract bonding electrons in a covalent bond, all right? So what do we, what do we mean exactly? So let me, Go back to our tennis balls here, all right? And here's one element, and here's the other element. And let's say that these two elements are forming a covalent bond between one another. So they're sharing their valence electrons, or at least sharing a pair of valence electrons between them, all right? Now, both of these elements uh, remember that they really want uh, those electrons to fill their valence shell, to give them that low potential energy state. Um, so even though they're sharing those electrons, those electrons are, um, they're, they're competing for them. Both these atoms are in competition for those two shared electrons. Um, they both kind of desire to have them um, more than maybe the other one. Um, so essentially, I, I like to think of it as maybe a tug of war match is going on between those two um, atoms for those valence electrons. One atom is pulling those valence electrons this way, the other atom is pulling those shared valence electrons this way, and they're just kind of competing for them. All right. So electronegativity essentially measures the um, the pool or the attractiveness for those shared valence electrons, all right? And we, we are talking about shared valence electrons, okay, between these two atoms. So some atoms are going to have a stronger attraction or a stronger pool for those shared electrons than the other, okay? And those are known as electronegativity values. So let's take a look at those values. You do not, basically, you do not have to memorize electronegativity values, okay? Rest assured, all right? What I have here is a periodic table um, that gives me the electronegative values for um, the elements, or the least of the, the really the main elements on the periodic table that we're going to focus on here. Um, so you got group one over here, and uh, this is group two. Uh, this the, this is really group three, four, five, six, seven. This is group eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Right, we're, we're gonna use our group numbers, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, okay? Oh, no group 18, okay? We'll come back to that in a bit. So if you look at um, these values here underneath the element symbol, those are the electronegativity values that we're talking about. And the higher the electronegativity value, the stronger uh, the element has for the bonding electrons, the more pull or the more attractiveness it will have, all right? So let's kind of look at these values and see if we can get um, kind of a clear uh, trend within the periodic table 
um, of, of these electronegativity values. So let's start looking at a group first. So let's look at the first group um, and look at those values. If you notice, the hydrogen has 2.1, lithium is 1.0, uh, sodium 9 point, or 0 0.9, and so forth. So essentially, as we're going down the periodic table, there's a less of an attraction for the um, paired electrons being shared. The electronegativity is decreasing. So in other words, um, atoms, if, if this was, a, a, let's say, a sodium atom versus a hydrogen atom, uh, the hydrogen atom having uh, a larger electronegativity value is going to pull on those uh, electrons with a greater attractive force than, say, sodium will be. Okay, so in other words, hydrogen is sort of winning the tug of war match. Okay, and that's going to have some big consequences uh, for hydrogen and sodium um, with that tug of war match. Okay, so in generally, do we see that same trend with the other group? And um, yes, we do. Look at, uh, for group two, we see gradually the decrease for the most part in the electronegativities, all right? And we're gonna see that throughout the periodic table. Let's look at group 17 here. And notice uh, fluorine 4.0, chlorine 3.0, uh, bromine 2.8, so forth. So the electronegativity is decreasing as we go down a group from top to bottom. Okay, that's really important to make note of. But what about going across a period? And let's start from left to right since we like to use that kind of um, periodic trend left to right. So starting with um, period one, you'll see hydrogen has 2.1. Oh, but there's no helium. Why is there no helium? Well, we'll come back to that in just a moment. But going across period two, from lithium to beryllium to boron, carbon, nitrogen, all the way to fluorine, what do you notice happening to the electronegativity value? Well, it's increasing, it's getting bigger, okay? So as we're moving away from the metals, essentially, right? As we're going away from the metals, more towards the non-metals, um, the electronegativity value is increasing. Um, and you can see that trend all the way through the periodic table. If you look at period three, again, you see that increasing electronegativity value. So uh, this shouldn't be a surprise to anyone that the metals have a less attraction for a pair of shared electrons than the non-metals, okay? Which kind of gives it its covalent, or sorry, ionic characteristic, right? Whereas the metals typically transfer their valence electrons to the non-metal, right? And there's no real sharing or really hardcore sharing going on at all because the uh, non-metal element is going to essentially steal those electrons, okay? So, um, Essentially, the electronegativity value uh, helps us to identify how well these atoms are sharing a pair of electrons in a covalent bond. Uh, the closer the electronegativity values are to one another, the more equal sharing that's occurring. But as you get uh, bigger differences in electronegativity values, the less sharing occurring and the more ionic characteristic that you kind of see is going on, okay? Now let's say you have, um, uh, let's say oxygen, say this is oxygen and this is hydrogen, okay? Um, they're forming a covalent bond, so they're sharing a pair of electrons. Hydrogen has an electronegativity value of 2.1, whereas oxygen has an electronegative value of 3.5. So which one is stronger? Well, oxygen is, right? Oxygen has a higher electronegative value, so it's going to be pulling on those two electrons that are being shared between these two atoms with a greater force. 
So that means that oxygen is going to be winning this tug of war battle between hydrogen and oxygen. All right. And so there tends to be a little bit of unequal sharing going on here, where oxygen tends to pull those shared electrons closer to itself, um, and hydrogen um, doesn't get them as close as is needed, okay? But they still are sharing, so it's still a covalent bond. It's just kind of an unequal sharing of those bonding electrons, okay? So hopefully you kind of see how electronegativity works, how we can use those values to determine uh, who is winning that tug of war match um, or who is, has a stronger attraction for the bonding electrons in a covalent bond, okay? Now, why do we not have the noble gases here? Why is group 18 missing from this table? Well, simple. They do not form covalent bonds really, right? Naturally. Um, they have full valent shells already, so there's no need for um, these noble gases to form uh, an attraction or a covalent bond um, and no need for um, essentially the, the tug of war match going on, okay? So that's why they're not there, okay? Essentially their electronegativity values are zero, okay? Now the other thing I wanna point out is what element has the highest electronegative value is fluorine and the least electronegative value is really down here, francium. So fluorine and francium are very opposite or extremes of the periodic table, okay? Getting rid of the noble gases because they don't form uh, chemical bonds really. Um, so fluorine being the highest electronegative element has the strongest attraction for a pair of shared electrons. And francium has the least attraction for a pair of shared electrons. So we would never consider francium ever forming a covalent bond with an element such as fluorine. Instead, it's gonna be completely ionic in character because fluorine is not gonna share those electrons at all. Instead, fluorine is gonna take them completely um, and have them in its full valence shell, or creating a full valence shell, and francium is gonna lose them. And therefore, francium and fluorine are gonna form an ionic bond between each other, positive and negative attraction versus a shared um, covalent bond uh, due to the differences in electronegativity, okay? But then something like uh, fluorine and oxygen being very close in electronegativity, uh, fluorine and oxygen are going to more or less make a covalent bond. They're gonna share those electrons. Fluorine has a little bit of an edge, right, than oxygen. Fluorine is gonna pull on those electrons a little bit more than oxygen. So there will be a little bit of an unequal sharing um, of those electrons between fluorine and oxygen, okay? But nevertheless, it will be a covalent bond, okay? So there, there's electronegativity um, ideas for you that are super important um, to make sure that you're, you're good with that. Uh, a last little bit, I just want to Again, look at the periodic trend of electronegativity. Um, so again, electronegativity values get larger as you move across the periodic table left to right, okay? Why does this occur? Well, it goes back to the same thing with atomic radii, with ionization energy. Um, the fact is, is that as we're going left to right, we're adding more protons to the nucleus of these atoms, and therefore the effective nuclear charge is going up. And as the number of protons in the nucleus is increasing, there's a greater attraction for those bonding electrons. So go back to the fluorine and oxygen example. Fluorine has more protons in the nucleus than oxygen does. 
So those protons that um, fluorine has, has a greater affinity or a greater attraction for the bonding electrons than oxygen does, being the fact that oxygen has one less proton in the nucleus, okay? So again, going across the periodic table, the electronegativity values um, get larger, they're increasing. That is because we're getting more protons in the nucleuses of these atoms, okay? And last, the trend for a group, um, as we mentioned, as we go down from top to bottom within a group, um, the electronegativity values decrease, okay? Now, why are they decreasing? Again, it goes back to the same thing why the radius is getting bigger or the ionization energy is getting lower. And that is because we are um, adding more electron shells. So the nucleus, um, the nucleus here is, um, the, the valence electrons are getting further away from that nucleus, right? As we're adding more electron shells. So that means the uh, valence shell, where the um, electrons are being shared at, right? Those two electrons in the covalent bond is being shared in the valence shell between the two atoms. So if the valence shell is getting further from the nucleus of an atom, it has less of an attraction for those pairs of electrons that are being shared, okay? So those are the two periodic trends for electronegativity that you should be aware of, okay? And that's it, that's it for this lesson. Um, we will pick up more about electronegativity in future lessons. Um, especially in the next lesson, it's going to be critical to your understanding of lesson seven um, to get a better feel of uh, the results of ionic or sorry covalent bonding and electronegativity consequences. Okay, so that's it for now. We'll see you next time then.